Welcome to the Ashtower Project Site Manager training video for the Georgia Department of Transportation, presented by Infotech Inc. This training video is entitled Entering Test Results in LIMS. In this video, you'll receive instruction about the following topics. Understanding the test workflow, entering test results in LIMS, handling requeued tests, handling retests, and adding testers. To demonstrate Site Manager materials and LIMS for you today, I'll use the Georgia Department of Transportation's customized Site Manager training environment, containing GDOT data and customizations that GDOT has developed for non-agency materials users. At GDOT, you will access Site Manager and LIMS through Citrix. Log on to Citrix following the instructions provided to you by GDOT. You will then log on to Site Manager via GDOT's virtual applications. Once a sample has been received in the destination lab and or lab unit, you're ready to perform the tests associated to the sample and enter your test results into Site Manager LIMS. LIMS security and the GDOT customizations will determine the tests that are available to you. You will only have access to tests associated with your organization and that you are qualified to perform. If a contract is associated to a test, you must also have contract authority on that contract or you'll not have access to the test. So let's go into the Enter Test Results window to learn how to enter our test results. I'll double click the icon. The Enter Test Results window has two sections. The top section lists all of the tests that you are allowed to access for your organization. When you click a row for a test in the top section of the window, the material test template for that test will display in the bottom section. You enter your test results in the material test templates. These templates were developed from GDOT forms to collect the necessary data and to define test specifications where appropriate for specific materials and tests at GDOT. So we can also use our filter criteria here. In the test queue area, you want to ensure that all my lab units is checked. That will let you see all of the tests associated with your organization that you're qualified to perform. I want to go a step further here and pick a particular test. So in the filter criteria area, the first field, click the drop down arrow and select sample ID. I'll leave my operator as contains and in the text box I'm going to type test in capital letters and click the apply button. And so my list now contains only uh, tests where the sample ID has the word test in the name, sample ID. I want a particular test. I want the test for the sample that ends in test A. So I'll click that row. And if you scroll over to the material code, you'll see material code FABR88163. In the lower section, you can see the material test template that is associated with this material and item. At the moment, only a portion of the test template is showing. We can scroll down to see the other fields, or we can expand our test template. I'm going to show you how to do that. On the test data title bar, over to the right, there is a maximize button. Click that, and Site Manager expands the test template window. Note that on this particular template, the text color of the labels is red, and there are min and max columns and fields on the right side of this template. Some tests have specification requirements they must meet in order to be considered passing tests. When that's applicable, the test template will show the specifications and compare the test results you enter to determine whether the test results are in or out of spec. When a value is in spec, the field label changes to black. When out of spec, the field label stays red. So let's enter some test results. In the first field, flexible water resistant asphaltic membrane, we're going to click the yes radio button. And note that our label text changed to black, so this is in spec. In the width field, I'm going to type 18.125 and use my tab key to move to the next field. In the tension strength field, I'll type 2014 and tab. In the softening point field, I'll type 222 and tab. In the elongation field, I'm typing 25 and tab. 
And in the caliper field, I'll type 0.136. Now in my pliability cold flex area, I'll click the pass radio button. In the remarks field at the bottom, I will type testing complete. So I have finished entering my test results and all of my template field labels have turned to black. So you can see that my results are all in spec. Also, if you look up near the top of the window, you'll see this box that has radio buttons for in-spec, out-of-spec, and no-spec, and the in-spec button is checked. So I've finished entering my test results, and now I want to get back to see the upper section of my window. So on the Test Data Title Bar, I'm going to click the Restore Down button, and this will show both of my uh, panes again on my window, my upper section and my lower section. So now that I've entered my test results, I'm ready to send my test off for review. So for my test that ends in sample ID of test dash A, I'm going to click the test completed box and click the save button. And that test has disappeared from my list and LIMS has progressed that test to the review test queue in the LIMS workflow. During the test review process, the reviewer can do several things. They can mark test results as complete, which approves the test and progresses that to the sample um, review area. They can recue a test if there are questions about the test result for the tester to review it. Or they can order a retest if they would like another run of the same test on that sample. If a reviewer orders a retest or recues a test, that test will come back to your tester's queue in this enter test results window. So let's first take a look at a requeued test. Let's highlight the row for the sample ID ending in test-c that has a test description of grab tensile of textiles. And if you notice over to the right, the test status is requeued. Now, when a reviewer requeues a test or orders a retest, they can put a remark in about why they're doing that. So let's go up to the Remarks button on the toolbar, click that, and we'll click on the Requeue Remark Type, and notice there's a little green check mark here, and we can see the reviewer's comments. Please recheck test results. So let's close the Remarks button and go recheck our test results. Click the Remarks button on the toolbar, and so down below, I can see my test results. It's a small template, so I won't expand the window. And here are all of my test results. Review them. I can make edits if I need to here. I'm going to uh, say that all of my test results here are correct. And so I can send this back to my reviewer with that information. So I'm going to open the Remarks button again and type RE-Q, and I'm going to add my remarks in here. Now I'm going to hit enter a couple of times so that my remarks show up under my reviewer's remarks. And I'm going to type test results are correct. And my user ID train01 and the date. G.policy is to add your user ID and the date after your remarks because as you can see all the remarks are tracked in one box, one remarks box, so this way people will know who wrote which remarks. To close the Remarks box, I'm going to click the Remarks button on the toolbar again. So I've reviewed my requeued test results, confirmed that those results were accurate, and I have put a remark in there for my test reviewer, so now I'm ready to send that test back to the Review Tests queue. So I click the Test Completed checkbox for that test and click the Save button. And that test disappears from my list and has gone back to the review tests queue. Now if a reviewer orders a retest, the system will create a new test record for that sample and display it again here in our enter test results window. You can see that the test for sample ID ending in test dash D is already highlighted. 
for a test description of insoluble residue. And so this is a retest ordered in the test status, and it's test number two. Test number one, our original test, does not display here. And in the lower section, we have our test template for this new test. Uh, we only have one field on this particular test template, and our insoluble residue value is 3.21. So up on the toolbar, I'm going to add a remark for our test reviewer. So I'll click the Remarks button. And this time I'm clicking the Retest remark type. And I will enter, this test has been rerun. And my user ID, whoop, and the date. I'll click the Remarks button to close the Remarks box again. And so before I save this, there's one other thing that I want to do. Let's look at the next section on adding testers. So LIMS automatically records one tester. You can see in the tester column, train01, that's me. I just entered those test results. If someone helps you with a test, you can add them as another tester on your test. So I'm going to click the Add Testers button on the toolbar. Oh and I'm going to save the data that I entered. And in the uh, additional testers available for assignment, I'm going to scroll down and find the tester who helped me, and that was John Lombardi. Click his row and add, click the Add button, and John moves over to the testers already assigned to the sample window. Click the OK button, which closes that window. And I want to add a remark to show that he helped on this test. So I'm going to click the Remarks button. And this time I'm going to stay in the internal remarks type and just type John L. assisted with test. Train 01 and the date. And I'll click the Remarks button again to close my Remarks box. So I ran my new test, I entered the test results, and I added another tester. So now I'm ready to send this test, test number two, to the review tests queue. So I will click the test completed checkbox and click the save button. And now this test has left our window and gone on to the review tests queue. So I've entered all of the test results information I have for today and sent all of my tests off for review by the lab supervisor. So I am done with my work in the Enter Test Results field for today. So I will close the window and click the File menu and Exit Application to Exit Site Manager Limbs and click Yes.